This is a 6S battery pack that I've made for a future project. Because I'm building an electric longboard. But for now, I've only received the ESCs, the batteries and a few more components. That's why today we'll build the first part for this project, the battery pack. I will tell you how to choose the correct batteries, the voltage value, how to connect them in series or in parallel and add the charging circuit. But before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future projects. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Great news about their services. JLC PCB has a widely priced cut for 1 to 6 layers boards and also an offer for PCB together with the stencil. The price is 15 to 20% lower on stencil, 25% on multilayer PCBs and 5 to 20% on batch PCBs. Production time and shipping is just a couple of days. So order your PCBs now for very low prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. To build our battery pack there are a few variables to have in mind. We have to know the final size and shape that we want the pack to be. Also the voltage that we need and the capacity. We need a charging BMS and choose the type of batteries that we want to use. So for my project, I want the maximum voltage that the ESCs and the brushless motor could withstand and that is 26 volts or 6S battery fully charged. Since the speed of the brushless motors is given also by the voltage, I want to have a maximum speed, so I will make a 6S battery pack, where the S is the number of series cells that gives us the final voltage. We know that the lithium polymer and the lithium ion cells have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, which is a very common voltage. So I will make my battery pack using these lithium ion cells, since they have a good enough energy density. I will use this INR18650-30 ion batteries with a capacity of 3000 mAh. This mAh unit refers to the amount of current that could deliver during an hour. In this case we could get a constant 3 amps for an hour till the battery is empty. Of course, this value is not always precise and also it's not a good thing to fully discharge the batteries every time. As for the voltage, these batteries are 4.2 volts when fully charged and they are considered discharged with no energy left at 2.5 volts. They also have a nominal voltage from 3.6 volts to 3.7 volts. This nominal voltage is the value that the batteries usually have on their labels. But when we use the batteries this voltage might be higher or lower, in this case from 3 volts to 4.2 volts when fully charged. So, my pack will be a 6S of total of 25.2 volts when fully charged and 18 volts when the batteries are empty. Now that we know the voltage, let's talk about the capacity. I know that each of these cells has a capacity of 3000 mAh, which I'm sure that will be less because batteries are not perfect. If we put the batteries in parallel, the capacity will sum up, but still have the same voltage. If I put the batteries in series, the voltage will sum up, but the capacity will still be the same. So I decided to make small packs of 3 cells in parallel and get a total ideal capacity of 9000 mAh. Next, I will put 6 of these 3 cell packs in series and get a 6S battery and 9000 mAh. And that will be my final battery. Before, I measure the voltage of each battery in order to make sure that they are ok. All the batteries have the same voltage. So I get all the batteries and some of these nickel strips. Make sure that the nickel ribbons could withstand the amount of current that the system might require. As you can see here, depending on the material that the strip is made of and the size, it could take more or less current. I'm using this 0.3mm thick and 8mm width that could withstand up to 40 amps. For the parallel connection I can put only one strip. But to be sure, for the series connection, I will add two strips, one on top of the other. I want my battery pack to be as flat as it can get. That's why I make only one layer of batteries, so it will fit well on the bottom side of my longboard. This will be the final shape I will give to my battery pack. Six packs of 3 cell batteries. I take my spot welder station, I get the nickel ribbons and the batteries. Just put the ribbon on top of the battery. Select the power and put the battery against the spot welder. The distance between the electrodes should be around 3mm. 
Press the pedal and there you go. I've soldered the nickel strip and the battery together. I make 4 weld points for each battery to make sure that the connection is good. Once I have 6 packs of 3 cells, I make the connection in series in the same way, but welding 2 strips each time, one on top of the other, and my 6S battery pack is soldered. But something is missing. We also need to charge this battery pack. If we look at the datasheet, we can see that usually, we can charge these batteries with a constant current and constant voltage values. To be more exact, a constant voltage of 4.2 volts and a current of 1.5 amps. Since my battery pack is 6S, that should be a voltage of 25.2 volts and since I have 3 cells in parallel, well, a constant current of 4.5 amps. So if I set my power supply to 25.2 volts and a current of 4.5 amps, that should be enough for the first charge. But in this way, since not all the batteries will charge at the same rate, this might damage the batteries after a few more charges. We need a control and balanced charging process in order to be sure that each cell is charged at the same time and value. For that I will use this BMS, or battery management system. Since my battery pack is a 6S1, well I had to buy a 6S BMS as well. This small module will protect the batteries from overcharge, over discharge and short circuit, and also make sure that each battery will be charged at exactly 4.2 volts. What we have to do is to solder each of the cell wires to each of the 3 cell packs. So follow this schematic to make the connections. As you can see we start with the negative side of the battery pack. Then we connect the positive side of the first 3 cell pack, then the second and so on till we get to the final terminal of the 6S pack. Next, these B plus and B minus connections will go to the positive and negative terminals of the entire 6S battery. Then the P plus and P minus are the main input charging wires. So I solder two thick wires to these terminals. I finally wrap the pack in a bit of scotch tape so it won't move and I put the battery connector at the output. Now that everything is soldered, I connect my power supply as before at the P plus and P minus terminals and charge my batteries in the correct way. By the time the battery is almost full, the current will get lower and lower. So as you can see, now at 25 volts, the current is around 2.5 amps. After the charge process is complete, I measure the final voltage and it's exactly 25.2 volts. Now the battery pack is complete, but it has no case. What I've made is cut a 3mm aluminum sheet so it will also act as a heat dissipator, and then I glue the batteries to that metal plate. I finally cover the final battery with some paper tape. Since I'm still not sure how the final case of the electric longboard will be, I won't add anything more to this pack. I will leave it like this till the next part of this project. But there you have it, I've made myself a 6S battery pack of 9000 mAh with BMS protection charging and in the shape that I wanted for my project. I hope that this video will give you a general idea of how to select your voltage, capacity of your battery pack, proper circuit for the charging process and how to solder your batteries. Also that you have learned a bit more about lithium ion cells. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep this kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.